as it turns out, the thing that you can't say at NPR is that NPR is biased to the left. You're not supposed to say this, even though it's perfectly obvious to everybody. So according to NPR itself, NPR has formally punished Uri Berliner, the senior editor who publicly argued a week ago that the network had, quote, lost America's trust by approaching news stories with a rigidly progressive mindset. Berliner's five-day suspension without pay, which began last Friday, has not been previously reported. The reason that they're mad, of course, is because this particular NPR employee said the obvious truth about NPR, that they are not to be trusted because they are far to the left and their agenda is apparent in everything they do. And by the way, it's still publicly funded. Well, if you actually wish to earn back the trust of Americans, what you wouldn't do is suspend Berliner. What you would do is maybe not have hired Catherine Marr, who's the new chief executive. NPR is treating her as a victim. They say conservative activist Christopher Rufo, who, by the way, don't get on Christopher Rufo's bad side, I think is the, is the moral of this story, is among those now targeting NPR's new chief executive. Ah, oh, she's targeted. Ah, oh, what, a, what a brutal life it is to be an NPR executive who is having her tweets reviewed. Among others, those posts include a 2020 tweet that called Donald Trump a racist and another that appeared to minimize rioting during social justice protests that year. Meyer took the job in NPR last month, her first, at a news organization at all. In a statement, she said, quote, in America, everyone is entitled to free speech as a private citizen. What matters is NPR's work and my commitment as its CEO, public service, editorial independence, and the mission to serve all of America's public. NPR is independent, beholden to no party and without commercial interest. Uh-huh. Sure. So I just want to point out exactly what Catherine Marr has said in the past. Again, if you wish to earn back the trust of Americans, what you don't do is hire somebody like Catherine Marr. But the truth is that when you read Catherine Marr's tweets, there's really only one appropriate way to do it. And that's to apparently get really high and read it like beat poetry. So we're going to skip the part where we get really high, but we are going to read it like beat poetry because her tweets read like, like beat poetry. She sounds like a Berkeley sophomore who has discovered pot for the first time and just read a little bit of Noam Chomsky. That, that is what she sounds like. So here, here we go. Let's get, let's get the, the sound in here and let's do some deep thoughts from Catherine Marr, the brand new CEO of NPR, one of the biggest news outlets in America funded with your taxpayer dollars. My brothers and I had some deep talks. We're each over 30 with real jobs and deep discomfort about what it would mean to bring a child into a warming world. That's from March 26, 2019. Here's from 2011. With Elizabeth Warren running, there's finally a candidate for Dems to get excited about in 2012. Here's one from 2012. Agenda for today, put on a dress, meet some senior officials, boss it in a man's world, critique the politics of representation, scotch. 2019, always trust structural privilege to show itself. She's like a Kamala Harris fortune cookie over here. This is one of my favorites. This is from 2019. Quote, anyone else love watching the credits at the end of a movie or show just to marvel at the diversity of names and surnames involved? Always gives me happy goosebumps to see the world scroll by. Okay, literally no one. No one has ever watched the credits on Marvel movie and been like, wow, look at the racial diversity in those names. Here's from 2016. This is when she's a racial justice hero. Quote, for the record, I don't usually fly business class. Just bored past it on the way to the back of the bus. She's like Rosa Parks gang on the way to the back of the bus in commercial class. And finally, 2017, I'm in Canada today where the sun is shining. Healthcare is functional. Facts are real. And no one is about to be imminently annihilated. That was 2017. I noticed the calendar now says 2024 and no one was actually annihilated. I lied. There's one more that I have to that I have to include here. This is from 2018. And it's a handwritten note from her. Kind of like Taylor Swift's latest lyrics. Quote, what would a feminist internet look like? What would a black internet look like? Wow. Wow. I haven't, haven't thought about that. By the way, she says, it's so strange to be called the Biden supporter. I'm a supporter of human rights, dignity, and justice. She's just one of the good people. Yes, probably that's it. Probably that person should be the head of NPR to restore their reputation for objective credibility. That's, I think, the, the key message here. Suspend the guy who points out that they're a far-left organization. Make sure to protect the lady who tweets like that. Again, like a Berkeley sophomore who just discovered the pot stash. Well done. My days are really, really full. Got the show, got the company. I'm a dad, got a lot going on. 
I can't keep up with my day if I don't get a good night's sleep, and that is why I rely upon my Helix mattress. Helix harnesses years of mattress expertise to offer a truly elevated sleep experience. The Helix Elite Collection includes six different mattress models, each tailored for specific sleep positions and firmness preferences. If you're nervous about buying a mattress online, well, you don't have to be. Helix has a sleep quiz that matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress, because why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? I took that Helix quiz. I was matched with a firm but breathable mattress. I love it. My wife loves the mattress. We are big Helix fans at the Shapiro house, which is why we also got Helix mattresses for pretty much all the members of our extended family. Plus, Helix has a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix's financing options and flexible payment plans make it so a great night's sleep is never far away. Helix is offering my listeners 20% off all mattress orders plus two free pillows. Go to helixsleep.com slash Ben. That's helixsleep.com slash Ben. It's their best offer yet. It's not going to last long. With Helix, better sleep starts right now. Go check them out right now. Helixsleep.com slash Ben. When Joe Biden continues to walk around confused, the Roomba of the president, as Shane Gillis has said, uh, that, that just doesn't stop. The world is falling apart, and so is Joe Biden. Here he was yesterday getting confused in Pennsylvania. Here he comes down the stairs. I swear, every time that dude goes downstairs, you're like holding your breath. Is he going to make it? Is he going to make it? He's, he's on, they, they, they let him take the short stairs now because he's, he's confused. Where am I going? I don't know. Dude, you have to finish going down the stairs first. That's where you're going. There's literally no directions. You're in the middle of the staircase. And he's like, where do I? Down, Joe. Down the staircase. <laughs> that wasn't the only episode of Joe Biden becoming randomly confused yesterday. Here he was getting even more confused. You know, uh, thanks to the mayor, Paige, can, can, excuse me, I'm gonna, I was going to talk about the old mayor. Wow. Good stuff right there. It's always a good sign for your presidential campaign when your attorney general has to declare that you are not mentally impaired. That, that, Joe Biden's 2024 campaign slogan, Biden 2024, not mentally impaired like you think. <laughs> Here is Merrick Garland. Thanks to Mitch McConnell for not allowing this schmuck to be on the Supreme Court of the United States. Have you ever seen evidence of impairment in your meetings with the president? I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I testified, and I'll repeat again what I just said. Well, that's different seen, than my question. Well, I have seen the president effectively guide the, the uh, members of the department, of, of his cabinet, uh, uh, and his military. Through but you won't say you've ever seen uh, any impairment on his part? Uh, the, the, the president has no impairment. The president— You've is, never seen any? I don't know how many ways I can say this. Okay. I have complete confidence in the president and I reject your characterization. Well, I'm sorry that the rest of us have eyeballs and ears. Joe Biden is impaired, obviously. But it's not just that. Joe Biden is about to lead off a full decade of tepid growth, according to Axios. The era of rip-roaring global growth with rapidly rising prices to match is over. Now the global economy is transitioning to a steady but slow state, according to the IMF. The IMF projects the global economy will grow by 3.2% in this year and next, a similar pace to 2023. The fund suggested that the United States will grow 2.7% this year in terms of GDP. But over the course of the next decade, things are going too slow. Apparently, according to IMF Managing Director, Kristalina Georgieva, she says, quote, without a course correction, this decade will be remembered as the tepid 20s. So yeah, that, that sounds very, very good. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 